Hi, I'm Dr. Jared Gardner. I'm here today with my awesome resident, Dr. Haluk Kaivas. And we were just looking at this nice example of a hypertrophic actinic keratosis. You can see that it's characterized by acanthosis or thickening of the epidermis, jumbled atypical keratinocytes, mostly along the, the basal layer. I'm trying to see, this one's not as atypical as some but they're kind of jumbled and disorganized down here. But as they go to the top, they get more pink and mature. And then they, at the top, uh, get flattened out and then develop into parakeratosis. And um, so you can see also another nice feature of this AK is that actinic keratoses, they tend to make parakeratosis and they also tend to spare the openings of adnexal structures like sweat duct openings, acrosyringium or hair follicle openings. And this is such a nice example because you can see it really great here that you got parakeratosis and then it skips past this hair follicle opening and over the hair follicle you have nice loose basket weave orthokeratin and then you go back to that dense compact pink parakeratosis. And if you're a new beginner to, to derm path, parakeratosis means nuclei that are retained in the corneal layer. Normally the stratum corneum is loose flaky dead keratin without any nuclei but the nuclei are retained here. And the reason that happens, parakeratosis is a sign that the epidermis is growing too quickly. Normally cells go from the basal layer up to the top of the epidermis and then die and turn into stratum corneum. That normally takes about 28 days, give or take. But when you have the epidermis growing too quickly, for whatever reason, the cells grow too quickly, the granular layer never has time to develop. And normally the granular layer plays a role in the cell breaking down and turning into a normal stratum corneum, but here, Actually, this area over here shows it the best. That here you have lost the granular layer and then you've got parakeratosis on top. Over here right next to it, you have a nice thick granular layer and orthokeratosis on top. In this case, the orthokeratin is a little compacted together and the granular layer is thicker than usual. And that's because this patient has been picking and scratching at their actinic keratosis. So this is a, 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 a reactive change to the epidermis that gets thicker, gets hypergranulosis, and it gets kind of compact, dense keratin, and it has a little band here that we call the stratum lucidum, which is normally only present in the palms and soles or in skin that's been scratched. So this process is called lichenification or lichen simplex chronicus. It's a reactive thickening of the epidermis from scratching. And most people who have actinic keratosis or any other kind of little skin lesion like that, a lot of times pick, people scratch and pick at their skin lesions. I know I've done it and I'm sure you probably have too. So it's normal to see kind of thickening and lichenification next to some of these skin lesions. But I thought it's a nice contrast here of when you have parakeratosis, usually you have very little or no granular layer. And when you have orthokeratosis, usually you have a granular layer. So it's a good contrast between how parakeratosis and loss of the granular layer go hand in hand and how orthokeratosis and presence of the granular layer go hand in hand. And you can see this, whether it's actinic keratosis, squamous cell carcinoma in situ, or even reactive things or inflammatory things like psoriasis, where the epidermis grows too quickly. The, in psoriasis, the keratinocytes go from the basal layer to the top in about like seven or 10 days, and it's not enough time for a granular layer to develop, so you get parakeratosis and loss of the granular layer. But uh, the, back to the thing that I got sidetracked from earlier, here you've got the AK, and then you can see that it skips past this follicle opening, and then there's more AK, and then it skips past this follicle opening, and then there's more. So that skipping or sparing of the um, adnexal openings, the hair follicle and uh, sweat duct openings is real characteristic of actinic keratosis, and it produces this alternating pattern of kind of columns of, orth of a parakeratosis with areas of loose orthokeratosis in between. And some people have likened that to the appearance of a flag. And so they call that the flag sign. And you particularly see it in actinic keratoses that have a real thick layer of parakeratosis. Um, so this is, I would call this a hypertrophic actinic keratosis because it's thick. Some people would also say it's hyperkeratotic. I kind of lump those two terms together, even though technically they are different things. Hyperkeratotic means that the, the corneal layer is thick. Hypertrophic means that the epidermis is, is thick. And in all honesty, it's probably a bit of a misnomer because it's probably more like hyperplasia rather than hypertrophy. But in any case, uh, I would call this a hypertrophic actinic keratosis. And this is the flag sign that people think if you've got a good imagination, this looks like the flag. And the final little bit of information we'll extract from this simple bread and butter case is that in anytime you've got a real thick uh, corneal layer, whether it's ortho or para, you do have a tendency to get some little 
guys that come to hang out in here and grow. And so these round structures you're seeing here, it's a little hard to get them in perfect focus. These are yeast. And these are not causing any problem. They're just commensal organisms just hanging out here and eating the oils, the sebaceous um, secretions of your skin drain to the surface. And that's why skin gets oily. And these um, are malassezia, also in the past have been known as pterosporum fungus. And they're a type of yeast that lives on basically everyone's skin. And they usually live in the openings of hair follicles because they're living off of the sebaceous secretions. So here's a sebaceous gland and they're bubbly because they're full of fat and that fatty greasy oil comes out the hair shaft opening or the hair follicle opening out to the surface and normally it kind of gets wiped off your skin but if you've got a nice thick cornea layer it can get kind of trapped in there and then that provides a nice happy home for these fat loving little yeast to grow and thrive and so you can tell they're yeast because they're round and they're budding it's really hard to get it. I don't have a higher, uh, a higher power objective. This is on 40 X a 400 times magnification, but you can see the round yeast and they've got little tiny buds out the side. I'll have to find a good picture of that and insert in here before I put this online. Uh, the other thing is that um, unlike a lot of fungus that look clear on uh, hematoxin and eosin stain, uh, the yeast, the Malassezia slash Pterosporum yeast, they are purplish color. They're usually easy to see on a regular H&E stain, even without a fungus stain. You don't have to do a special GMS or PAS stain to see these fungi most of the time. Candida yeast look almost identical to these. And so these are not causing a problem. They're just growing here, hanging out there. I don't even mention these in my report because it's a normal finding, basically. The only time that these do sometimes produce um, an abnormality is when they start overgrowing and they produce hyphae. And in that case, they have the, the so-called spaghetti and meatballs appearance. They have the yeast plus the elongated hyphae. And that means that they are overgrowing and they're producing a condition called tinea versicolor or Pteriasis versicolor, which is probably a better name because these are not real tinea um, dermatophyte fungi, but they're a different type of fungus. And so in that case, people get um, patches on their skin that are either hypo or hyperpigmented and usually otherwise relatively asymptomatic, but they can be a cosmetic problem. And the other thing I was going to mention in here is that in addition to yeast, look at these much, much smaller little dots. You can see that there are some really tiny dots that are much smaller than the yeast, and those are bacteria. So both yeast and bacteria are round, but once you see them side by side, the, the size difference is dramatic. The, these little guys here, or girls, either way, I don't know. These little, little tiny ones, I'm trying to get the arrow without knocking, those are bacteria, and then next to them you can see those are yeast. So look, the, the yeast are like t five or ten times bigger. They're much, much bigger than the bacteria. So when you see them back to back, it's easy to notice them. So there we look at all that from one shave biopsy. I was going to make a two minute video, but as all of you know, I can't do anything without being verbose. And so we've got eight minutes of hypertrophic AK, malassezia, uh, fur fur fungus, and uh, the flag sign, and a little bit about lichen simplex chronicus. I'll put some other links uh, in the video description for other videos that you can expand on, on what we've talked about here today. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great day.